Hey guys, what is that? Was such a weird intro. Hey guys, what is up? It's me, Page here, once again with another review or another video on the Flash season nine. This is going to be my review for episode eight for this season, otherwise entitled Partners in Time. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it was an episode, but of course, spoiler, if you've not watched the episode, we're going to be talking about everything in this episode, even though it's pretty much completely throwaway. So yeah, let's talk about it. But of course, if you have watched the episode and you are continuing on, be sure to let me know in the comments section down below your various thoughts in this episode. Let me know. And of course, if you're going to enjoy the video and everything like that, want to show your support, drop a like on the video. Always curious to see if you like the video and just what you're thinking in the comments as well. So last week was another throwaway episode. So no point recapping it really. There wasn't even anything. Actually, there was nothing relevant in that episode, was there? No, right, was there? Well, Iris submitted the Pulitzer thing, but even then that wasn't brought up in this week's episode, I don't think either. So yeah, I don't think anything from last week's episode was relevant. I'm trying to remember, there was nothing with Keon, I don't think. So yeah, I don't think anything was relevant, which is weird. Anyway, just, just realize that now. Okay, let's, let's move on to this episode, I guess. But this episode, look, it's the last of the like pure interlude or filler episodes. Of course, the next episode we have is the Oliver Queen episode. Unfortunately, which is so triggering, there was no setup for that, which I'm shocked that they didn't do because that was usually a template for like filler episodes in previous seasons, even last season, is that you would tease a bigger thing. They didn't do that in this episode. They didn't do it last episode either. It's almost shocking that they didn't do it. I, I don't know why they're randomly changing it up now in the final season, especially when the next episode is that episode. But anyway, they didn't do it. Um, so yeah, there was n nothing really relevant f from this episode. But the thing that really hit home with this episode, and I was wondering, I got about like 10 minutes into it when they started doing the main stuff. And I was like, this legitimately feels like an episode of Legends of Tomorrow. This ep it legitimately feels like an episode of Legends of Tomorrow. Let me know if you ha you felt that vibe as well. Um, because sure, we've had the other interlude episodes, which have sort of tried to play into like, I guess, comedy, but not really been that funny. Um, but this episode purely felt like if you replace Baron Iris with like Sarah Lance and Ray Palmer, it would just be a Legends episode. Like it just completely felt like Legends. But yeah, I guess the most important thing heading out from this episode is that it is the last of those pure filler episodes before we get the Oliver Queen one, which should be exciting. But um, I've seen a debate whether this is the, like how does this rank among the three interlude episodes? I want to say by default, it's just the better one. Though last week's episode might've been better. I don't, I'm not too sure. To be honest, I don't really care about ranking them. <laughs> I think it's more wasting of time doing that. So I guess decide, among you, decide amongst yourselves, I guess, what was better out of these three episodes or how would you rank them? But yeah. But in regards to this actual episode, it actually start off pretty interesting. So we start in the year 2123, or exactly 100 years in the future, at the Flash Museum, where we have this hooded figure, you know, walking through the Flash Museum, going to this room where we see like Chester P. Runk's tech labeled everywhere. And there's also like a weapons vault there. And they're trying to get into this weapons vault before they actually trigger the security and escape through a breach. And we see this like little ball device thing, which I was wondering, is that something we've been, we've seen before, but apparently it's just something random that's invented from this point forward into the future, I guess. Now, back in the present day, Barry does schedule a mold inspection, which we knew based of the uh, synopsis for this episode, it's like the whole setup for the episode is that a mold inspection kickstarts all this like craziness. And it's to make sure that Star Labs is safe enough to bring Nora into when she arrives, which makes sense. Though you could argue like Nora is still like months and months and months away. So like at least half a year, roughly. So I don't know, maybe they're rushing, I don't know. Um, but this results in a team of inspectors arriving for various things. However, after a short amount of time, once they're in the speed lab of all places, they are stuck in, in like this endless loop and unable to get out. And the doors to get out just lead back in. So just sort of like a endless maze, if you want to put it. When all of a sudden this like mysterious grandfather clock shows up out of nowhere when it wasn't there before. So all these anomalies are starting to show up. Now there are two other sort of like minor storylines. One's not even really a storyline, just an, ex an explainer as to where someone goes. So Keown goes off to visit Carla Townhauser in this episode, just to uh, touch base. Now, the reason for that is that Daniel Panabaker is directing episode nine. This is episode eight. She pretty much spends the week before directing an episode, scouting locations, prepping for an episode. So usually if they're doing that, you're not going to be in the episode. It always happens, whether it's on The Flash or any other show. And don't expect it to be in too much of next week either. So that's why she wasn't in the episode too much. They 
probably would have had a that, that's probably why the next thing was so drawn out and awful in this episode uh and why there were so many scenes with it and that thing was of course the chegra or the chester and allegra stuff i'm not going to spend too much time on it i just have to say that was awful that was some of the worst stuff i've seen i, I can't remember it was it was painful but I think it was only stretched out to be as painful as it was because they didn't have someone like Daniel Panabaker to do a Kion thing because she was prepping the next episode. So maybe that was the original plan there and then the directing schedules came out and she wasn't in this episode too much. I don't know. But um, I it was like, I, I honestly wouldn't blame someone if they turned it off. Some of that, especially that end scene in Jitters, terrible. Like, wow. Anyway, I don't want to talk about it anymore. Let's move on to the stuff that was actually like, okay, throughout the episode. And now we had Barry trying to run to the future to sort of like, um, like try and solve what's going on here, I guess, get a solution there. Um, which I think the only reason they did it is because they knew it wasn't going to work in regards to the writing sense. I think if it was anything where it actually provide a proper solution. They wouldn't have had Barry do it, but because it was like, well, it's just going to lead back to this point. They just let Barry do it because they knew there was no consequences to it, um, which I guess it sort of like speeds stuff up because it sort of messes what's going on even more with all these other various time anomalies starting to show up like different period attires and like, you know, costumes and stuff like that, or, you know, how they're dressed. And then Barry decides to reveal he is the Flash. So the group of inspectors and the only, like at the time I was like this, why would you do that? And I understand why the writers did it once again. By the way, this, this episode wasn't written very well. Um, I just want to say that out of the gate. Um, but I understand why they made Barry reveal he was the Flash now in that episode. Because as we see at the end, it just sort of resets and everyone forgets. It don't, like they get to the point before Barry would have told them they're the Flash. Because at the end of the episode, the inspectors come in like they haven't started the inspection yet. So at that point, Barry hadn't told them that he is the Flash. So that's why they did it. But at that point, Barry wouldn't have known that everything was going to reset and they wouldn't know. So they didn't write it very well. Um, and I don't think Barry needed to tell them he was the Flash. I think they could have he, he just said, oh, I know a lot about things. And just used his knowledge as the Flash. But... Yeah, they went down that road for some reason, but anyway, whatever. Now we learned that the reason they are stuck in the steam, uh, not the steam lab, the speed lab is because of this time magnet from the future that usually has a stabilizer alongside it, but it did not apparently arrive with it. But it's actually what we saw at the start of the episode in the Flash Museum in that like container thing. It was like that little ball with like hexagonal or pent pentagonal like little pieces on it. But it's believed that whoever took it would also be stuck in this situation. So most likely someone in the speed lab alongside them who was the one that took it. So one of these inspectors is a phony. So who is it? Now, I didn't mind this situation. I think actually the general setup there, it's like a bit of a, like a, you know, it's almost like a bit of a murder mystery, but like who took something? So I think the setup there is actually not that bad. I don't know if the execution was very well done, especially how they solve it. Um, I didn't mind the setup there. I wish they'd done more of this. I wish the Chester and Allegra stuff wasn't in this episode at all and just done more in this situation. Made like a bit of a, like an episode of like Clue or something like it, but like we're playing Cluedo, but instead of a murder, it's just who stole something. I just had more time anomalies show up. I think they, this episode could have been much better than it was. And I think it's probably the best of the three interlude episodes, maybe. But it still dropped the ball. Like, that's something that, like, last episode did as well. Like, the Nia now coming in could have been much better. And I feel like they just didn't really try too hard. But the general, like, concept there I thought was actually pretty interesting. It could have been done much better. But... I know they just didn't, I guess, didn't have enough time or something like that because they just spent so much time with Chester and Allegra and didn't do it in this little area here, which they could have done something cool. But yeah, unfortunately, we didn't get more of it and it could have been better. However, what happens is that we actually see one of the inspectors being replaced with an ancient statue. So effectively being, I guess, killed at that moment. Obviously, this is undone by the end of the episode, but at that moment, effectively killed with this being what will happen to everyone else if they don't solve the issue. This also including Barry and Iris. But it is pieced together that the inspector involved with electrical stuff, as they do say, is the Faith and is revealed as Lady Kronos, who is a character from the comics, but she has no idea how to get out of this situation either because she traveled back to the future after posing as an as an expected to get in. But when she came back without the stabilizer, it sort of started this like loop, like this time loop trap sort of thing that they're in. But Barry charges back up her like time travel belt thing, which at first I thought was like some sort of like a future hour man sort of thing because of the hourglass and stuff. But yeah, it's just a time travel belt thing, which allows her to place the magnet back in the future 
which allows Barry and Iris to get out of the time loop trap thing that they're in, which is then when we meet the inspectors and stuff like that and all that's undone, which as I said before, is like, well, he didn't really have to reveal he was the Flash, did he? Now, as I said, like, I don't think this episode was very good at all. I don't think it was, I don't think it was very bad. I just thought it was very mid, but I just wish we had spent more time in the Speed Lab thing. I think you could have done a big more mystery and had some character acting there as well. I thought it would have been really good. Um, maybe I just, I just didn't want to spend time writing the dialogue and just went really paint by numbers. I'm not too sure because I said the Chester and Allegra stuff really made this episode much worse than I think it should have been. So yeah, I wish we spent more time there. And side note, when I say there, I don't mean Chester and Allegra, I mean in the speed lab. Just want to make sure I make that clear. But the ending of the episode was probably the most disappointing thing because I can't believe they didn't do setup for the Oliver Queen episode. I can't believe that. That's, that's mind boggling to me. Um, th th that's like, th it's almost like stunning to me that they didn't do that. Like, I'm actually shocked that they didn't do it. it they would have done it in previous seasons. I'm shocked they're not doing it in, a, in the final season. It, it, it almost blew my mind. And it made it worse because the ending is just sort of like a repeat of the opening scene that we see Barry and Iris in. Like, not the opening opening scene, because that's the Flash Museum scene, but like the next one with Barry and Iris, it's pretty much just a repeat of that. Them eating ice cream or talking about ice cream. It's like, that scene's so throwaway. Like, there's no point having that scene there. Why not put a cliffhanger? I I'm shocked. It's 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 mind boggling. Yeah, really. Like, I I think I, I don't know. Like, I, I people have been like, oh, why don't you go hard? And it's like, well, it's more disappointment for myself in regards to why I'm not like whining constantly about it. And also, I don't really want to whine and whinge. I just want to more critique it for what it is and then move on. But the one thing I need to say, because we're at the end of this interlude thing, and I'm probably not going to mention these episodes really in too much regard because they are all throwaways for the most part. I don't know what the like the the writing process around it is. It feels like Eric Wallace just threw it to some like interns and went have fun. It feels like he had no control over this because there's nothing really relevant in this moving forward. It's all like little vague references to Nora coming, but nothing of importance. I feel like Eric Wallace took a month holiday and just went up. Oh, someone else can do it and I'll get paid, but I'll just run off and have my name on the episode or something like that. Really odd. It's a really weird three uh, three episode stretch and. The trailer for episode nine came out earlier in the day before this episode even aired, which just, it looks amazing. I can't wait to get into it, but man, like I can understand if someone was like a bit cautious leading into it based off these final, these past three episodes, because even the Red Death Arc as well, but specifically these past three episodes, because the quality control has been poor to say the least. So all I can say is thank the Lord Bebo, our blue fairy figure up in the sky that we are, um, we're past this because it's been rough. I think uh, if someone needs to go to counselling, ask Eric Wallace to pay the bills because I think he, I think he needs to. But yeah, like I don't know, no point really like overly reviewing the episode after the, you know giving an overall view now. Mid mid episode, whatever. Time to move on. Let's move to greener pastures if you want to put it. But yeah, thanks for watching, guys. If you enjoyed the video, feel free to drop a like and it shows support. It helps the channel. Uh, let me know your opinions in the comments section down below. Did you actually enjoy the episode? Um, I guess, what would you rank the three inch lead episodes if you want to spend time doing that? Let me know. I'm curious to hear what you guys have to think about this. Um, but yeah, let me know. Yeah, let me know all that in the comments. And of course, if you are new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and I will catch you guys later. Goodbye.